Welcome to the Shabby Fabrics at Home Studio. I am Chase, thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to make this adorable pumpkin bundle here. I think it is just so cute and fun. It reminds me of a day spent at the pumpkin patch on a nice autumn day spent with your loved ones. It's just so cute. And this will really look good in a multitude of areas around your home. You can set this on your mantle, you can put it out by your fireplace, on an end table. Really the possibilities are endless. These are the coziest fabric that we're using. It is the um, Woolies Flannel Collection by Maywood Studio. And we are going to bundle this up in a kit for you. So you have the matching collection that coordinates beautifully together. Um, to start out here, you're going to want to prep your materials. I'm just going to show you um, how to make this large pumpkin here at the bottom, but it is the same way for every pumpkin, um, just with different sizes, and your pattern will include the fabric cuts for you. So once you have your fabric prepped, we're going to start by just simply doing a running stitch here on the long side of this fabric. This is 9 by 21 and it's just a simple running stitch. You guys are gonna be surprised at how easy this project really is. And you're just going to continue along the border with a running stitch here. The distance really doesn't matter. We're just creating a running stitch so we can um, cinch the bottom of this to then stuff the pumpkin. So you just continue along and you're gonna leave about an inch at the end here for you to grab onto and cinch when you, uh, before you stuff the pumpkin there. So we're just continuing with our running stitch here until we get to the end. We wanna make sure we leave about an inch or so with our running stitch because we want to leave it for when we cinch it. And I am actually using a shabby chenille needle. I love this with the, some of our thicker thread, which I would recommend for this project. Um, something like embroidery floss because we're going to later tie a knot and it's um, important to have something a little thicker, not so thin. Um, and these shabby chenille needles are perfect with that um, wider eyelet on the needle here for those thicker threads. And I'm doing the same thing on this other end here, just that running stitch close to the border. Like I said, the distance between each stitch really doesn't matter. It's just going to provide a cinch for us later once we stuff the pumpkin. So I'm just gonna continue down this edge of the fabric. Okay, now that we have this side completed as well, what we're going to do is we are going to then fold our fabric so it is the right sides together. So then it will be with the wrong sides up. And you're gonna have each of your um, one inch threads here staying out of the way for then you to so another running stitch with these two fabrics right sides together. And you are not going to leave a one inch string at the end here. You're going to tie this and knot it. So that way these two pieces stay together. So once you have sewn a running stitch with the two pieces of fabric together, again, this is the right sides together with the wrong sides up. You're then going to cinch the bottom here. Doesn't matter which one is your bottom, just pick a side here. Grab on to that one inch um, thread here that we left, and you are just going to pull it and begin to cinch the bottom here so it is nice and tight. This is why I recommend a thicker thread so it's not thin and breaking and you're able to put a lot of um, weight onto it when you're pulling it and it won't break. So once you have your knot tied, I'm gonna do one more just to pull it extra tight. So we're tying our knot and then I'm going to cut it here a little bit with, I'm using the Kai embroidery scissors. These are nice, just perfect, handy and small scissors. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it back to the right side of fabric facing outwards. And you have the bottom there cinched. After you have that cinched at the bottom, we're going to stuff this with polyfill. Um, this is an easy to get at, you know, your local stores or another alternative. Um, if you have a throw pillow laying around that you maybe don't use anymore or a pillow that um, maybe from your bedroom that you're not using, you can go ahead and just take the stuffing out. We really don't need to use a lot for these. Um, 
and it makes the perfect stuffing for these pumpkin and it just makes it a little DIY project util utilizing um, things that you already have. So I'm just going to continue stuffing this until it is all filled out at the bottom here. Creates a nice shape filled out. Moving the stuffing around so that way that there's not a big wrinkle there or it's misshaped. And then once you have your stuffing laid out perfectly, filling in all of the borders there, you're going to then take your one inch um, thread that we left earlier from the other side and you're going to then cinch that side so it fills our hole there. And again, you're going to tie a knot to secure the cinch there. And there you have the base of your pumpkin. I'm then going to begin with our jute to wrap it to give it its little shape here at the bottom as you see. I recommend cutting your jute. It's going to be different for each person because depending on how much you stuff it compared to others. But we are going to divide our pumpkin into eights. Um, if you'd like your pumpkin to not have that many um, pieces of folds in it, you can do less. But I'd recommend about two yards of jute or so, and we will include the jute within your kit. We're going to then take the jute, apply it over the top here. I'm going to turn it and tie a knot directly at the bottom here and secure it and that's starting to create the little bends in our pumpkin here. And then I'm going to rotate it to divide it into fourths. Tie it again at the top just for extra security. Then I'm going to go diagonally across here, flip it, tie it again. And then again, one last time, across here diagonally, and tie it at the top again. It's better to have more jute than less, so that way you're not cutting it too short. And we do supply you with quite a bit of jute here for you to um, have more jute than less. And then I'm just going to simply tie it at the top here to secure it. And it's beginning to get that pumpkin shape here that is just so cute and adorable. And again, with my Kai embroidery scissors, just cutting the top there with the extra string. If you're done and you can see that your pumpkin has some little creases or wrinkles in the fabric, you can just simply take your finger and run it up between the jute and get those little wrinkles out and push the fabric to the top to get it nice and flat. But it's cute to have a few wrinkles here and there, makes your pumpkin have a little bit of character whenever you go to a pumpkin patch, not one is the same as the other. So this is how you're going to make all of your pumpkins for each of these same technique, what, like I said, with just smaller pieces of fabric as you go along. And once you have all of your pumpkins made, we're going to just simply glue these together. You can use your jute to string it, but I recommend a hot gluing it just because it stays a little bit more secure, but I have done both techniques. I'm going to lay out my extra large parchment paper sheet, which we do have available for you guys, just because it protects any surface that you're using and creates a nice wide area for you to complete um, and not worry about the messes. So I'm going to start with my green large pumpkin here, and I'm going to apply some hot glue to the pumpkin and just simply stack it on top. And we're just going to continue upwards with the rest of these pumpkins. So with this last pumpkin here, I'm going to apply glue. I am using our um, hot glue gun with the fine tip that is perfect for your mini craft projects. And I'm using our big glue sticks here that are great because you don't have to switch out your glue sticks um, so many times when you're doing a craft project with those mini glue sticks. These are nice and large and can work for your entire project. You do want to hold your pumpkins a little while till the hot glue sets just for it to dry so that way um, it's in a straight line, they don't start tipping over, and you'll just hold them in place until you create your cute little bundle here. 
So once you have your pumpkins all bundled together and the glue has set, we're then going to make this top little stump here. So we're going to take a floral wire stem, which this is also included in your kit, and we will simply just twist it in a little loop and twist the bottom two ends together. And we're gonna give it just a little bit of a shape here, just tilt it a tiny bit. However you would like your little stump to look, everyone is different, that's what gives it some character. And then what we're going to do is we're going to first measure to see just it's stuck in there, how you would like it shaped. And then I'm going to take some remaining jute here and I'm just going to simply hot glue this all the way around going upwards for the little pumpkin stump here. So you're just going to continue wrapping the jute upwards on this little stem here and then once you get to the end, you can just take your scissors, again the Kai embroidery scissors are a good option, and cut it and just cover the top here with some glue. Need a little bit more. Just to hide the stem there. Once you have it all the way up and the glue has secured, let it dry for just a moment. And then we're going to just take the little wire here and put it under the jute, just like so. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stick it in this little hole that we created in the beginning. I'm going to stick the floral wire stem in that little hole and then secure it with some glue and put this jute string over it to secure this little stem in place. Just hold it until the glue has set, and then once it's dried a little bit, you can then manipulate the stem into place, bend it how you would like to create it, you know, your own little personal touch, and that is the simple and easy process of creating this bundle. Really takes no time at all. I love the fabric that goes along with it, so warm and cozy. I think this is the perfect decor piece for your home. It will look so great, like I said, on your mantle, side table, wherever. I can't wait to see your guys' finished project and join me the next time for our next tutorial. In the meantime, make sure you follow along with our main YouTube channel, the Shabby Fabrics YouTube channel, and also follow along with the at home Pinterest and Instagram account, at home with Shabby. Thanks for joining me.